Okay, so today we're going to cover section four, or at least part of it, of the sine and cosine graphs. Now, some students actually memorize the sine and the cosine graphs instead of the unit circle. And I'm gonna show you how this sine graph relates to the unit circle. You can do exactly the same thing with the cosine graph, but just to show you for the sine graph and how what parts of it relate to the different quadrants of the unit circle. So for example, notice the x-axis here is all labeled in radians. Now I know it's kind of fuzzy there, but that first one from here to here, from to the pi over two, this is like quadrant one. It's from zero degrees to 90 degrees. Remember in quadrant one, all six of the trig functions are positive. Notice all of these points here are all above the x-axis. So this is like quadrant one where sine is positive. Then from pi over two to pi, this is like from 90 to 180. And this is like quadrant two. And again, if you do your all students take calculus, sine is still positive in quadrant two. Notice again, all of the points are above the x-axis. They're all positive. Then the next grouping here from pi to three pi over two, this is like from 180 to 270, which is quadrant three. Remember in quadrant three, only tangent and cotangent are positive. So sine is negative. So notice the points are below the x-axis. Then the last piece here, from three pi over two to two pi, this is like 270 to 360, which is like quadrant four. And again, sine is negative. And again, notice the points are below the x-axis. So this is how it relates. And let me show you the ordered pairs for those quadrant angles. So if you remember, if you have your axis here, remember zero and two pi or zero and 360 are here. And the ordered pair associated with that is the one comma zero. Over here is the pi over two or the 90. Order pair here would have been zero comma one. Over here at the 180 or the pi, this is negative one comma zero. And then for the three pi over two, this is the zero negative one. Remember for sine, we look at the y. So for example, if I wanted to do sine of zero degrees or zero radians, I come over here to the, the zero, I look at the y, and it equals zero. So when it's zero degrees or zero radians, notice my starting point here is zero, zero. Then if I did pi over two, sine of pi over two, come up here to pi over two, it looks at the y and that equals one. So when I go to graph the order pair for pi over two, my y value is one and that's why at pi over two, it goes up to the positive one. Then for sine of pi, pi is over here, it looks at the y, it equals zero. And notice at pi, it's touching the x-axis, it's at zero. And then if you did the three pi over two, again, it looks at the y, which is at negative one. And here it is down here. And then back to the two pi, you go back to zero. So this is how it relates to the unit circle and you can use those quadrant angles to get the basic sine graph. Now, when we go to graph the sine graph, we're gonna be adding in shifts, just like before we did with everything else we've covered, the conics or the exponential or the logs. 
Remember, we shifted those graphs up and down and side to side. In this one, we're also going to change the speed of our graph. Normally, the cycle or the period length for the sine and the cosine graph, it can be completed in 2 pi, a full circle. Sometimes it'll be sped up, and maybe we can do it in 180 degrees or in pi, or we might even slow it down. It may take 3 pi to complete. So that is going to be our speed or our period length that we're going to be changing. Uh, let's see what else on here. So you're going to memorize the basic shape. The sine graph always starts at zero. Now the direction that you're going to move from the zero, whether it's up or down, is going to depend if it's a negative sine graph or a positive. This is a positive sine graph, so from zero, zero here, I'm going up. If it were a negative sine graph, I would go down to the negative one first. And we're going to see this in the examples. The domain for this graph, all sine graphs, are all real numbers. So from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, notice it oscillates between 1 and negative 1. So the range goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Now, as soon as we add in an amplitude, that range is going to change. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the cosine graph. So for the graph of the cosine, you can also I, uh, tie all these points to the unit circle as well. Remember, for cosine, you would look at the x values. So again, same key points here. You got pi, uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. It's always broken up into quarters. So this one's going by 90 degrees, 90, 180, 270, 360. Again, the period, the normal period length for this cosine graph as well is it can be completed in 2 pi. The domain of the cosine is also all real numbers. And the range is also between negative 1 and positive 1. So the range... The highest it goes is 1. The lowest it goes is negative 1. Now, when we add in the amplitude, that range will change. So again, a normal cycle for the cosine graph as well can be completed in 2 pi. Now, the sine graph starts at 0, but notice the cosine graph starts at 1. So the cosine graph is going to start at 1, unless it's a negative cosine graph, then it would start at negative 1. Now, if we have an amplitude, then we're going to start at that amplitude. And you're going to see that coming up. But the normal basic cosine graph will always start at 1 on the y-axis. Now we're going to see where we can find an amplitude and where we can see to modify the cycle length or the period length. So the amplitude is going to be the number that's in front of the word sine or in front of the word cosine. It's this A here. So the A represents the amplitude. And the official definition here is half the diff distance between the max and the min values of the function given by the absolute value of A. Bottom line, it's how high and how low your graph is going to go. The B in the equation here, this is going to be our period length. Normally, it's 2 pi. But when we speed it up or slow it down, what we're going to do is take that normal cycle length of 2 pi and we're going to divide it by B. If the number, if the B is greater than 1, it's going to speed it up. If it's a fraction, we're going to slow it down. We're going to see how this works. So normally the full cycle or the full period length is 2 pi, 
but as soon as they've added in a number in front of the X, that's gonna either speed it up or slow it down. So let's go ahead and look at the steps that we're gonna follow in order to graph the sine and the cosine graphs. So step number one is to identify the amplitude and the period. Then after that, I'm going to find key points by multiplying that newly formed period length by one fourth, one half, and three fourths. The first one is gonna be zero, the last one is the period length. Then we're gonna take those points that we just calculated and we're gonna label them along the x-axis. Then we're gonna mark our amplitude, then we're gonna connect the points to match that pattern that we just saw in the sine and the cosine graph. It's always the same wave. So let's go ahead and try an example. So the first thing I'm gonna do, step number one, identify the amplitude and the period length. The amplitude's easy to find. It's just this number that's right here in front of the word sign. So this is my amplitude. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with it right now. I'm just gonna label my y-axis with this number. Now, the period length though, I need to take this b, because remember the number in front of x is b, and remember to find the new length, I take two pi, I divide it by that b. So two pi divided by two just gives me pi. So now this one's faster. Okay, it's going two times as fast. Normally it takes two pi to complete the cycle. Now I'm gonna be able to do it in 180 degrees or in pi. Now I need to get my new x-axis labels. The way that I get those is I take this newly formed cycle length and I'm gonna multiply it by 1 fourth. And this is always the same numbers. Multiply it by 1 half multiply it by three-fourths. And then the last one is always the, the normal, what you just calculated. So what I like to do is some kids forget to put this one on here. So I just tell them multiply it by four over four, which is really multiplying it by one, which is the same thing you just got here, because that's your last point. Then over here, pi times one over four is pi over four. Pi times one half is pi over two. Pi times three fourths is three pi over four. If you recall from your unit circle, pi over four is 45 degrees, pi over two is 90, three pi over four is 135, and pi is 180. So notice in between each one of these labels that I'm gonna put on my x-axis are 45 degrees. So now let me go ahead and make an X and a Y axis. I'm gonna make my coordinate plane here. Go over here to the side. So here's my Y axis. And here's my X axis. And again, I'm not in notability, so my line's kind of wiggly. But just try to make it straight. Now, you can, um, put however many boxes in between each one that you want. Um, just make sure that they're spaced evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and space them every four spaces, or every four boxes. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, they just need to be evenly spaced. All right, so now, what I just calculated by multiplying by one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, that's what's gonna go on these little marks that I just made. So the first one is the 45 degrees, the pi over four. Then the next one is the pi over two. Then the three pi over four. And then lastly, the pi. Now, if you noticed, I also put marks on the left side of my y-axis. I also have to label that side as well. 
So the first mark is the negative 45 degrees, then the negative 90. I'm just going backwards now. Negative 3 pi over 4, and then finally the negative 180. So these are my key points that I've just labeled along my x-axis. The next step is to mark the amplitude. Notice my amplitude was four. So all I'm gonna do here is come over here to the y-axis and I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four. You could space it however many you want, but I'm just gonna put a four here. One, two, three, four, and a negative four here. Remember the amplitude is how high your graph goes. Remember in the basic graph, it only went up as high as one and negative one. So as soon as you add in an amplitude, that amplitude replaces the one and the negative one. So remember this sine graph starts at zero, zero. So I'm gonna put my first point right here. And now I'm gonna follow the pattern. Sine graph, as long as that amplitude is positive, from zero, zero, it's gonna go up at the pi over four, and it's gonna go up to the four, which is the amplitude. Then from there, I don't go any higher than that. Now at the next key point, I come down and I put my next point on the x-axis. The next key point, I now drop down to the negative four. So it goes up, down, down, up, up, down, down, and it just keeps repeating the wave, and then it bounces back up. Now, when you connect these, do not make a zigzag like this, straight lines. This is a curve to this. So I'm gonna connect it with a little curve here, 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 just add a little curve to it. I also need to graph the other side. So again, instead of bouncing up, remember you need to go down. So I'm gonna go down at negative pi over four, and then I'm gonna go back up at negative pi over two, back up here, and then back down. So it's a pattern. And there is, I guess I should have done it in the same color, but that's fine. And there's your graph of sine with an amplitude of four, and now the cycle length instead of two pi is now pi. So it's going faster. Let's also try to speed up the cosine graph on the next example. Same steps. Pretty good here. Let's try cosine. So again, my amplitude is negative two. Now, remember, normally cosine starts at positive one. For the cosine graph, you're always gonna start at the amplitude. So normally, we would start at one, but if there's an amplitude, that's the point we start at. Now I need to calculate the period length. Again, remember, this is B. And remember, you take two pi and you divide it by B. So I'm doing two pi divided by two thirds. I need to do like a keep flip change. I'm doing two pi times the reciprocal. The twos will cancel. And now, because my um, B value was less than one, now my cycle's taking longer, it's going slower. So it's actually gonna be completed in three pi instead of two pi. So let's go ahead again. We need to get those key points by taking the three pi. We multiply it by one fourth, one half, three fourths, And again, to get that last one, you can show the four over four, just so you don't forget about it. So this one becomes three pi over four, three pi over two, nine pi over four. These are going to be the points that I put along my X axis. I'm gonna put them in both directions, both the positive and the negative. 
So again, let's make an X and a Y axis. And again, just evenly space them. So I'll just put little four little squares in between each. Again, it doesn't matter just as long as they're evenly spaced. Do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four. My line's kind of wide there. Two, three, four, and four. All right, so let's go ahead and label the ones that we just calculated. So the first one is three pi over four. The next one is the three pi over two. Nine pi over four and three pi. Do the same thing over here on the negative side. Negative three pi over four. <clears throat> negative 3 pi over 2, negative 9 pi over 4, and negative 3 pi. Remember, cosine normally starts at positive 1, but when there's an amplitude, this is going to be the number where we start on the y-axis. So I'm going to start, let me add in the amplitude. So I could say that 2 is, let's see, this is 1, Say so two is there. So this will be positive two, this will be negative two. So my first point is going to start at zero, comma, negative two. From there, I'm going to go up to the x axis. Then at the next key point, go up to positive two back down to the x-axis, and then back down to negative 2. Connect them, make them wavy. Do the same connections on the negative side. So this one goes back. Corey, yes? Why is it negative 2 and not 2? I thought it said that A was given by the absolute value. Okay, so... A is, so the, that's like the distance between the two. However, whatever number there is there, that's where you start. Okay. So then here, here, oops, wrong way. Here, here. And there is your cosine graph with an amplitude of negative two and a, a period cycle length of now that's been slowed down to three pi, or yeah, to three pi. Yes? So do you always know that? And I think that is you, yes. So I will finish these notes tomorrow. You should have a general idea of how to start the homework if you choose. Have a great afternoon. I'm gonna end up finishing the video if anybody wants to watch it, but I'll finish the notes in class. Okay, so now let me go back and multiply. So this, I can actually simplify diagonally. Let's make that a one, make that a two, pi over six, same thing here pi over three, same thing here. The threes will also simplify, I'm left with pi over two. And then lastly, the original period that we calculated by dividing by B. So this one's going faster. It's actually completing the cycle in two pi over three, which is 120 degrees. Now notice the negative, this is gonna be a negative sine graph. Remember the sine graph always starts at zero, but now instead of going up, I'm gonna go down to that amplitude, which is the one half. So let me go ahead and create my axis here. 
going to go ahead and put in these key points. So go ahead and make my separations. Here, here, and here, and then also on the negative side. As well as over here. So this is negative pi over 6, negative pi over 3, negative pi over 2, and then negative 2 pi over 3. And then over here, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, and then 2 pi over 3. Now I'm also going to add in the amplitude. So it's going to go up as high as half. So let's say this will be one half. And then here, negative half. So remember, your sine graph always starts at zero. But because it's the negative sine graph, instead of going up to the amplitude of one half, I'm going to go down at pi over six to the negative half. Then it's going to come back up to zero at pi over three up to the 1 half at pi over 2, and then back down to 2 pi over 3. Let me go ahead and complete the, the negative side. So over here from the 0, it's going to go up to the half, then back down, and then down here at negative pi over 2, and then back up again. So again, let's connect the points. Again, make them curved. and you're done. And there is your negative sine graph. And again, this time the period is faster. It's going complete cycle at 2 pi over 3. Now let's see some examples where we're going to shift our graph vertically. When a number is being added or subtracted from the function, this is going to create a vertical shift. So when you're adding a number, this would be, for example, on this problem, or this equation, we would be shifting our graph two units up. Over here, when we're subtracting a number, this would be a shift of three units down. So let's try some examples. So here, first example. Notice we do have to recalculate the period, but this positive or plus one Tells, tells me I'm going to shift after I graph it. I'm going to take all of my points and I'm going to shift them all one unit up. So let me go ahead and recalculate my phase or my period. Sorry. Um, so again, remember this is your B value. So you're taking 2 pi, dividing it by this B value, which is 4. This is going to simplify to pi over 2. So this is actually going super fast. So let me go ahead and take that pi over two. Remember you need to break it into quarters, so multiply it by one fourth, one half, three fourths. And again, to get that fourth point, I'm just gonna multiply it by four over four, which again, remember we need to include this last point, which was the original period that we calculated. So let's go ahead and Multiply these, pi over eight, pi over four, and three pi over eight. Now that I have my key points, I'm going to add those to the x-axis. And I'm going to graph both equations. So I'm gonna, let me go ahead and create and set this up first. And then I'll graph them in colors so you can see it a little bit clearly. Get all the separations here. All right, so let me add in the labels here, the key points. So this first one is pi over eight, pi over four, three pi over eight, and pi over two. Negative pi over eight, negative pi over four, 
negative 3 pi over 8 and negative pi over 2. There is no amplitude, so I'll go ahead and I'll label this as 1. Let's see how many boxes that was. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then negative 1 will be down here. Now, notice I'm shifting everything up one unit. So let me go ahead and add another marking here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be at 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then here. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to first graph my original equation. I'll do that one in blue. I'm going to graph y equals the sine of 4x. Then after I get that one on the graph, then I'm going to take all of my points and I'm going to shift them all one unit up. So again, remember the sine graph starts at 0, 0. So I'll put my first point here. And because it's a positive sine graph, it's going to go up to positive 1 at the pi over 8, then back down to pi over 4, and then down to negative 1 at the 3 pi over 8 and then back up to zero at pi over two. Let me complete the negative side. So again, at negative pi over eight, it goes down to negative one. At negative pi over four, back to zero. Negative three pi over eight, up to the one, and then back down to the zero. So again, we're gonna add a little curve to all of these. So without the vertical shift, this is the graph of y equals sine to sine 4x. Now what I'll do is I'm going to include the shift. So again, I'm just going to take this graph and now I'm going to move all of my points just one unit up. So again, I'll take the one that's on the zero. It'll go up to the one. This one will move up to the two line. This one will go up to the one. This will go up to the zero. To the one, to the two, and just continue shifting everything up one unit. So now I can connect here, here, comes down, up, up, down, down, up. And there is the shifted sign graph. Let's try one more shift. This time we'll shift all of the points down it because we're subtracting one. So these will be all shifted down one unit. So again, let's go ahead and figure out the new period. There's no amplitude here. So I'm going to take two pi So let's go ahead and calculate the period. So remember, this is really looking like pi over 4 times x. So my b value here is the pi over 4. So that's what's here. So I'm going to take 2 pi, and I'm going to divide it by pi over 4. So 2 pi, keep flip, change it. The pi's cancel. And now I'm just left with 2 times 4, and my cycle length is 8. So again, I'm going to break it into quarters. So I'm going to be doing 8 times 1 fourth, 8 times 1 half, 8 times 3 fourths, and 8 times 4 over 4. 8 over 4, this simplifies to 2, 4, 6, and lastly, 8. So let's go ahead and get these key points along the x-axis. Let me go ahead and break it up into different intervals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. And I'll do the same thing over on the negative side. 
One, two, three, four, four. All right, so let's label these. Negative two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. All right, so let's graph the original one without the shift. So the first thing we're gonna do is graph, and I'll do it in blue, y equals sine pi x over four. So again, the first point for the sine graph, remember already, already always starts at zero, zero. Let me go ahead and add in my uh, y-axis labels. One, two, three, four, five. We'll say this is one, this is negative one. And I'm gonna be shifting everything down. So let me go ahead and add that one in as well. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm spacing them about five apart. Okay, so now from these points, again, remember the sign graph starts at zero, zero. From there, it goes up to one at the first angle at the first point and then down back to the x-axis then it goes down here and then back up if i were to continue it over here it goes down up up down connect them and now let's apply the shift so now we're going to graph y equals sine pi x over four minus one. So I'm gonna take these three points and move them all down one. So the one that's on the x-axis will come down here to negative one. This will go down to the x-axis. This will come down here. This will come a little bit lower down to the two, down here, 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 and here. So now we can go ahead and connect. Let's make this make a level there. All right, so now it goes here, here, down, up, up, down, down, and back up again. And there is your shifted graph, one unit down. So in the next video, in the part two, Next, what we're going to do is a phase shift, and I will cover these examples tomorrow.